how away would you say, Richard, that the Welsh public are of, of Welsh politics and of, of the devolution process? Well, actually, as it happens, we did a, a large piece of research on this recently for the Assembly Commission, which was based on a, a very large sample opinion poll. What we found was that um, there's a difference between how much people think they know and how much people actually know. But that said, they, people do, in a general, very, very general sense, have an idea that the Assembly has got kind of limited lawmaking powers. There's a general kind of very, very broad understanding of the constitutional settlement. There's also more specific understanding, perhaps, in those fields which impact most on people, so education. So people have a sense that uh, the Assembly and the Assembly government have a role in education. That said, there's clearly deep confusion about the difference between the Assembly Government uh, and the National Assembly itself. People just don't get the distinction between them, which is not really surprising. So would you say that the answer to addressing this lack of awareness would be to create a, a simpler settlement to it that, that lacks the, the legal complexity? Well, I mean, clearly, uh, there, there's a, I mean, I've argued consistently going back to, um, uh, to 99 the... Uh, and the, uh, initi the, the first meeting of the Assembly, that the complexity, the Byzantine complexity of this settlement really militates against public engagement. Because frankly, you need to be a constitutional lawyer to understand which particular powers the Assembly has. Uh, and the, the new ELCO system actually adds to the complexity rather than takes it away. So there's a, you know, if you're interested in devolution, as, as an instrument to actually make society more democratic, which our uh, leaders claim they are, there's a real problem with the settlement because it's basically so opaque, so difficult for the electorate to know who's responsible for what. But it actually militates against democratic engagement. It probably undermines the, the legitimacy of the political process as a whole. Do you think that a yes vote um, in any referendum on extending the lawmaking powers in Wales would simplify things. Would winning a referendum make uh, matters uh, less complex? Absolutely. I mean, the, the whole ELCO system, the whole involvement of the Select Committee of Welsh Affairs, of the Wales Office, all these kind of intermediate layers would would lose their influence, and that would be um, that would make a system much, much clearer for everybody. That said, it would still remain quite complicated for reasons which are complicated to explain. But compared to where we are, compared to where we've been since 99, it will be much, much better. Do you think that the people of Wales are aware of what a referendum would mean? I think people uh, may well be aware what a yes vote uh, might mean. That they think that this would mean a move to a more Scottish-style system. And while people don't understand the details of the Scottish system, I suspect people um, believe it's, it's a more powerful form of delusion, which is correct. On the other hand, I, I think I, I'm highly sceptical as to whether people understand what a no vote would mean. Because a no vote would essentially mean remaining with the status quo of the elk course and, and this particular Byzantine system. And I, I simply don't believe that people understand that system. I think people think that a no vote would be a vote maybe to get rid of devolution or for less devolution or something, not a vote for the status quo, which is what, what, which is what it would be. Obviously the All Wales Convention is, is taking place at the moment, um, inviting feedback from the people of Wales. Yeah. Um, up to now, they've only been exposed really to arguments in favour of a no vote yeah. with the launch of the True Wales campaign and David Davis. Um, Bethan Jenkins has this week spoken of, of the need for um, a yes campaign to be launched so that those people are exposed to both sets of arguments. What's your take on that? While I understand um, <coughs> you know, Bethan Jenkins is a devolutionist, she wants a yes vote, it's, it's clear why she would say what she's saying. Um, I think the politics of this are the Effectively, nothing's going to move before the next UK general election. It is simply unrealistic to expect the Labour Party to engage seriously with this until they know what the result of the next UK general election is, because that changes everything. If the Conservatives win, then you can easily see how Welsh Labour would be much more united in favour of a yes vote, for example. Um, so, realistically, I don't think anything will happen this side of a UK general election, and I think there's a, there's a danger uh, that trying to push too hard now might actually 
uh, entrenched sections of the Labour Party in positions which they'll find hard to roll back from after the next UK general election. So if I was the strategist of the, of the Yes campaign, I would actually say it's probably better to do work under the radar screen at the moment, to actually start talking about the modalities of a campaign, talking through messages, those kinds of things, rather than trying to launch anything. Because frankly, there isn't going to be a referendum before 2011. Back into the complexities of the, of the current settlement, yeah. and the obviously the complex outco system, yeah. what do you think, apart from um, extending the settlement, can be done to, to improve people's understanding of the system? Well, I mean, I, this is such a Byzantine system that I think one is one is um, kidding oneself if one believes that you're actually going to get serious public understanding of this. It is just a very, very complicated system. And, of course, a lot of the real stuff is happening behind closed doors. So even those of us who observe this very, very closely know there are kind of black boxes there which we can't look into. So, you know, this is, this is a non-transparent very, very complicated system, which is basically designed uh, for the convenience of politicians rather than for the benefit of public understanding. Obviously, if the Tories win the next general election, um, do you feel that a, a Conservative Secretary of State would, well, would he have the power to and would he veto all, all legislative proposals made by the Welsh Assembly? Well, they clearly they could, yeah. I mean, this is, the system allows that to happen. I mean, I don't think, by the way, I don't think a Secretary of State would be unwise enough to veto everything. But what they'll do is veto the things which are which are most contentious. And that will create problems, because there's a clearly a, a centre-left consensus in the Assembly and a, a centre-right government in London. You know, this, it doesn't take a genius to work out how that's going to pan out. Uh, and I suspect that if, if we see regular use of the veto, that in the end, even people in the Labour Party in the Assembly who were more sceptical about moving to a referendum would actually just get fed up and you'd get the supermajority in the Assembly. And there are clearly Tories in the Assembly who would vote for a, a referendum because they're principal devolutionists, even if this creates huge problems for them in the Conservative Party. So do you think that the, the most effective way for the devolution settlement to be extended in Wales would be for a Tory government to be elected in Westminster? Well, I've argued in a recent uh, article in, in the magazine Barn that if I was, um, if I was uh, the strategist for a Yes campaign, I would actually try and get a referendum in 2012. Uh, the, the, and this, <coughs> the argument runs something like... It's, I suspect Labour will run this government right until the end. So you'll have a La you'll have a Tory government in London if the opinion polls remain favourable to the Tories. You'll have a Tory government in London by June 2010. Uh, they'll have a halo effect, you know. So there'll be a period of popularity which devolutionists would be wise to respect. But what I would do is I would move the vote in the Assembly in uh, spring 2011. For a, get the required supermajority, then challenge the Secretary of State to allow this to happen. If he or she says no, then you run the Assembly election in May 2011 on the basis of you know Wales should have the right to choose, and that's always a good, always a good message. And I wouldn't be want to be the Conservatives arguing against that. And then you try and have the referendum either in the autumn of 2011 or the spring of 2012. And that would be, if you're a devolutionist, I suspect that's the most favourable time to run this. Would you say that when a referendum is called, there will be sufficient support for a yes, a yes vote? So much depends on the context. I mean, um, referendums are a very, very difficult, tricky way of actually resolving any question because you know, there tends to be a bias in favour of the status quo. They're essentially conservative devices. So, I, you know, I'm not a betting man and I'm not betting.